Okay, so today we're going to take a look at this uh, spinner bingo problem. And uh, one nice little demonstration you can do is you can go to the site unpracticalmath.com where they have a, a nice little virtual spinner applet that you can use. So I've actually opened up two of them and I'm using a, a Windows 7 here to kind of have them side by side. And I'll just look through some of the features here of the spinner. Uh, it's got a menu. I can, I can go to up to 20 different sections. Um, I can have nothing in the, uh, in the sections, uh, numbers or letters. And just because I felt fancy schmancy today, I've, I've colored them in a little bit. So I have two spinners here. Uh, I'm going to spin both of them, and we are interested in some of those spinners. And we also have our bingo card. I have a bingo card all set to go here. That I just took a, a regular tic-tac-toe board and, and put in uh, nine different numbers here, just semi-randomly, just kind of assigned them there. And again, we have to pick numbers from 2 to 16, because if we're spinning two spinners, and uh, the lowest on each is a 1, and the highest on each spinner is an 8, uh, the lowest sum we can get is a 2, and the highest spinner we can get is 16. So let's do a few rounds here, and let's look at my card again. Let's do a few rounds and see if I can get a bingo here, okay? So we're going to spin both of these guys, and it's a nice little animation here. So we got a 4 and a 5, so we got a sum of 9. Do I have a 9? Oh, I do have a 9. So we have 9 here, and I'll just dub him out. So we got 9. Perfect. And we'll spin again, we'll spin again. <laughs> 7 and 4, 11. I think I had 11, didn't I? I have 11 down here. Well, I have 11, but it's not real helpful to my bingo yet. We'll spin again. A oh, bigger spin that time, and a nice spin this time. And I got a, uh, what I got, a two and a one. Three. Do not have three. All right. Let's play just a couple more times and see if we get a bingo going on here. So I spin, and I spin, and I got six and eight. Fourteen. Do I have fourteen? Do not have fourteen. No. Well, this game's a little tough to win, right? So we spin, and we spin. Six and four. Ten. I don't think I had ten. Oh, I do. All right, I got 10. Now, the deal is I need two to win, but this is where we start to talk a little bit about uh, what's what's probable versus what's plausible. Um, because we know some of the numbers, some of the sums here are easier to get than others. Uh, the only way that I can get a sum of two is if I spin a one and a one. And that's similar to a sum of 16 where I must get an eight and an eight. Um, so two, it's, it's possible, uh, probably not plausible. I need something very specific to happen. And uh, if you've looked at my lesson, we're not going to talk about the, the probability or assign a fraction to that just yet. Uh, but eventually, the kids might be able to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and just do it a couple more times, see if we get a bingo here. Wouldn't it be cool if I just got one here? So we got, oh, one, nope, two, and uh, three, and three, six. I didn't have six. We'll do it two more times. Spin and spin two and uh, five, seven. Do I have a seven? Oh, I have a seven. Oh, now this opens up a good one. Twelve. Twelve is one that's fairly plausible. I have a whole bunch of ways of doing it. I can do 8 and 4, 7 and 5, 6 and 6, 5 and 7, 4 and 8. Uh, 12 is not a bad one, so let's let's roll for 12 here. We get 7 and all. Come on, 5. Come on, 5. There it is. Five. There we go. Bingo. How cool did I get a bingo here? Totally not rigged, everybody. So it's a great discussion of, again, not just what's probable, what's plausible, what, what are the different outcomes and how are their probabilities different? And, and it's a nice opener for kids. And let them play it before you introduce the scary language and have some fun with it.